We had a great big flat piece of ground that was full of fire ants, and that's all we had. You don't have amenities, you have to create them. So we worked to do that. Created a brand new beautiful park in our city. So how did you get it done? It was because the county worked with us and helped us in so many ways, bolstering our economic values because it raised our property values and it caught the, caught the attention of the young professional who wants to move in to a place where they can start and raise a family. We have a brand new, sized perfectly for Meadows Place, it's small, dog park that is used now all the time. And it's now becoming a place where people meet friends and neighbors on a regular basis and you see the, see the pairings off and that friendships are being developed and we're meeting people that they never met before and people are moving back to the City of Meadows Place to raise their kids and that's the strongest testimony I can give anybody. Fleek is becoming a center point from Freeport to Rosenberg and then with the new Spur 10 coming in it's going to create a new um, Exes to Houston, San Antonio, you know, just all over. So, uh, Palik is fixing to just bust wide open. The council got together and decided that we were going to, you know, put out the money to get new fire trucks and that for the safety of our fire people and uh, safety of the citizens. And so, it's kind of a pleasure to work with people like that because they only have one thing in mind and that's to. Uh, make the village of Plick a better place to live. Beasley was founded on was was the farming and the cattle raising out here and so you know it is still very strong in our area. Recently done some stuff in the past years we got grants to update our water and sewer plant you know that way we are prepared for when growth does come. I love to come to Beasley. I, I do a lot of traveling, but there's no place like home. <laughs> the best thing about our area is the real estate prices. It's a great value. The price per acre uh, is cheaper than anywhere in the county that I know of. Uh, early part of 2013, I've had a company come in and buy roughly about eight acres of land. They're going to move from Katy to the Orchard area. Uh, this is the kind of growth that we're excited about. I think it's a good match for our area. The prices are certainly good, and I think we provide a great place for those kind of companies to move into our area. This community spirit and the simplicity of life is what I love about Orchard. Uh, I hope that never changes. Even as growth comes out, I hope that we continue with that spirit out here. One of the things to understand about Fairchild's is that it's first and foremost a, a farming community. We've got all this open space around us and that equates really to a quiet country life. No real projects. We want to keep the same uh, way that we go about business in Fairchild's. We, we are definitely a small town. We are uncomplicated. We don't think big. I'm not, we're not after recruiting any big businesses to come to town because we really we don't have a tax rate, so it wouldn't benefit us at all. Back in 1995, when Fairchild Incorporated, uh, one of the things that that council did was they required two acre minimum build. So if you're gonna buy a house in, in uh, Fairchild, you're gonna, have to, you're gonna have to have two acres. Bottom line is, it has helped us grow slowly and in a more comfortable way. The reason that Missouri City was rated as one of the best cities in the United States to live in, one of the most affordable cities to own a home and one of the safest cities, is because the income level, the education level, and the home ownership level is higher than the average than it is in other parts of the country. So those companies that come into our city are looking for that stability. Probably when you look at the two industrial parks that we have, Lakeview Business Park, uh, and the Gessner Commerce Park. You've got Benny Keith, which just had their grand opening last week, and they're the fourth largest food distributor in the United States. So all of a sudden, in the last 18 months, uh, we've been very fortunate to see about $500 million worth of new businesses. And the most important part about that is that 1,500 new employees 
do a survey of the citizens of Missouri City and say what's the most important thing about Missouri City? Parks is always number one. We're very proud of the fact that we've got 22 parks in the city. Every time we've done a bond issue, we've involved citizens on a bond committee to tell us what their uh, priorities are. It's small, it's unique. I know everyone here in Thompson. We have an industrial agreement with NRG and Brazos Valley plants, which the pavement comes in once a year. And invested wisely, town, the town of Thompson has been able to live off of that and live off the investment interest. We have a 10-acre park. We have a program that we send all of our youth from 5 to 15 to the YMCA and the city budgets to pay for that. At least 15 kids during the summer for six weeks. Even though we're small, but yet and still we're still mingling with some of the larger cities. And there is always a lesson for your small cities to learn. We get to meet some, you know, uh, interesting people. And I have a good relationship with mostly all the mayors in Fort Bend County. In fact, they love to come to Thompson to eat catfish when we sponsor the Mayor and Council Association. Fulcher is a blank canvas that's waiting to be painted. Now, I would never go and consider myself an artist by any stretch of the imagination, uh, being an engineer, but that's the role that we have in planning for the city. We have our original downtown area that has a little more of a historic small town feel and character, a Dozier's Barbecue, the Fort Bend County Library. Those are some of the mainstays that we had here from the very beginning. Right now, we're just on the verge of tremendous commercial development. Our housing population and residential growth is just phenomenal. The west side out here, the Fulcher area, has been in the top growth areas in the nation in the last five years for growth. We have the highest educated population in Fort Bend County, and the time is just about right for the explosion to occur. Growing up, my father always said, if my kids weren't welcome someplace, then we didn't go there. So our children, in my estimation, are the greatest asset that we have, and they really bring the biggest smile to me. We're building all of our infrastructure with money that we actually are able to save because we have a zero property tax, and it goes into this fund called a municipal sales tax fund. So but through that then, we have been able to completely reduce, and this year we will eliminate our general obligation debt so the city has no outstanding debt. We feel good that we have that type of financial strength, and we're encouraging, trying every day to encourage commerce to come in here and people to come in who are uh, interested in what we have to offer. We have a city that where people like to come to live, uh, they're comfortable with it. We're not trying to be elitist, we're not trying to outdo anybody else, uh, but still we're able to do some things that few others have been able to do. Bill Small came in here and kind of put us on the map. Before that, we didn't have two nickels to rub together. This year, for the first time, when, since anybody can remember, we're actually giving a tax cut to our, to our homeowners, our residents, and the commercial customers are all getting a tax cut. The energy corridor has moved this way, and it's moving this way daily. We already have places open, like Igloo uh, is having a grand opening of their new warehouse. There, there's just so many opportunities here, and, and if people want to find a job here and work here, there are opportunities here for that. I call Katie a family. It's a huge, one huge family where everybody knows everybody. Let me tell you, you can whisper on one side of town and it'll be on the other side of town before you can get there, whatever you whispered. That's how it is. It's just that close knit. Everybody knows what's going on. And it's just, it, it, it just, it does make you smile to think that, that anywhere you go, you, you'll see somebody you know, a friend you know. And, uh, you know, that's what life's all about.
Well, Simon Tennis is uniquely located at the intersection of FM 1093 and FM 1489 in northwest Fort Bend County. And clearly, I can get you from I-10 to I-69 in about 23, 24 minutes. What that means is when you locate your business here, that what we're going to be able to do is give you logistics. What I didn't mention is that we are right on the corridor for the West Park Toll Road. We've grown. You can find Polo within three minutes of City Hall. You can find fine dining within 12 to 15 minutes at this very location. We're also looking to develop strategies so that we can have influence as, as our area does develop, whether it's in the city limits or not. We know it's coming, and what we want to see is the, the best outcome for our residents and for the area in general. Basically, we're a gated community. Private streets, the city owns no property in Western Lakes. Um, we only have one business, and that's uh, the Western Lakes Country Club. So I think those are a little unique uh, to others. We uh, have no ad valorem taxes. We uh, receive our monies from uh, franchise fees. You don't have tr through traffic, so you don't have to worry about traffic coming through. And uh, you can hear the birds in the morning. It's just a peaceful, quiet thing, and I know when I go to bed at night, I'm very secure, and I feel the same way when I get up in the morning. So, to me, uh, after searching Fort Bend County when I moved out of Rosenberg, it was the only place to go, and I still feel, I'm still in love with Western Lakes. This water coming in is one of the biggest things that have hit our coast since it's been a city. We're still on water wells. And this has been a long time coming. We've started years ago, but we've been using grants, we're using loans, we're using CDBG money, EPA stag grant, government, any kind of a system we've, to come to this point. So right now, it should be all completed. Everyone in our color who wants water should have water by the spring of 2014. You know, I would love to attract a Walmart. Walmart, to me, is one of the biggest money tax makers for any city. I like, I just like the fact that we're, we're growing at a decent pace, but we're not catching up with the, all the other things that the faster people are doing, you know. So in our color, you can buy enough land, get you some space and get a good garden going and a lot of things you can do with your family. We're, we're a whole lot of a uh, bedroom community right now. Uh, they've come and investigated the school systems and they said, we come to Needle because we know y'all got a good school. Uh, all my children graduated from Needle, they're all doing good, we've got it. They just don't go to school, they get educated. We, are, we have drilled a new water well on the southwest side of town. It'll serve our water needs for probably the next eight to ten years. We won't have to worry about having any more water. I think that we have the infrastructure with the water and sewer system that we can handle a business that comes in. We'd like to have some manufacturing companies or something like that, and I think we've got the infrastructure to handle that part. City of Neville is always open to any businesses or people that want to come to Neville. We're open to any suggestions. We're not a hard-nosed town. Our sign out is, if you look, when you come in, it says the home of friendly people, and we do believe we are friendly. You know, right now we have about eight million dollars in projects going on with uh, water and sewer expansion as well as uh, road road expansions. And the rail system you know, goes all the way into um, Lazaro, Port Lazaro, Mexico. So um, it will uh, bring jobs as well as rooftops to the city of Kennelton and help grow the, uh, the southern end of uh, Fort Bend County. A little over 300 acre park. It, it um, has fishing, canoeing, and a lot of people come down and they do bird watching down there as well. On the city side here we have a 80-acre uh, park that we have down here. The county is going to help seal that lake off and get, you know, get it filled and uh, also have fishing available. We're trying to uh, open up that uh, agriculture area right now. There's only is agriculture, but it's not really serving as a tax base for the city. So if we can open up some of that area, get water and sewer infrastructure out there and uh, utilities, you know, we can entice some of those companies that may not be as large to go into the Indian motor facility, but, but come over to the Kenton side and help build up the tax base for the city as well as the county. So we can make life better and easier for the, our community here and for the citizens of our community. We have a new 
new city charter and, and the uh, benefits of our new charter are that we will be able to now annex extraterritorial jurisdiction areas. We will grow in size and this will also enhance our ability to add uh, ad valorem taxes and revenue to our city. When people want to uh, relocate, they want to also think about their workers and the lifestyle for their workers. And Richmond has the lifestyle that benefits families. We're not a hustle bustle city. We have a lot of amenities that benefit uh, particularly young families, growing families. That's why I think businesses looking at Richmond would want to relocate here. Part of the reason Fort Bend County is so good is because you do have this common bond between the mayors, uh, common goals and common interest. And when you think of Richmond, you think of our beautiful green old oak trees, lots of historic homes with white picket fences around them, and we also have our charming and graceful old courthouse. The wonderful newspaper, our Fort Bend Herald, and uh, we learn all our local news from our newspaper. We also learn local news from AD's Barbershop. So it's just a wonderful place to live, and we share a real closeness and bond in Richmond. Uh, Sugarland, I think one of the things that we talk about, uh, we're, we mean business. But what we want to do is take it to a level from uh, the, the sports venues, we talk about our Constellation Field, uh, to the arts. Uh, we're working on a new performing arts center as, as we speak. Creating more of a cosmopolitan type feel is, is what's bringing corporations there. They really look at the, the other amenities for, for cities. We have really gone back and dwelled on the history of our community, we've, we've created a pride. We've created a citizen's pride in our community. And, and when they volunteer and, and get involved in those things, it, 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 uh, it makes them and it does create that small town sense of community. That's only one of the ways, but that's always a challenge of any uh, fast growing suburban city in today's market uh, because everybody wants to create that small town feel, but have the large town amenities. So. the Seaborn Nature Creek Park. It's got a lot of little hidden gems. Also, the Railroad Museum. It is the only uh, railroad museum in Fort Bend County. And then the historical downtown. That is uh, a becoming a true designation point for our city as far as our historical area. This year, we were designated as a cultural district from the Texas Commission on the Arts. We're very proud of this because Rosenberg is the one and only city in Fort Bend County that uh, has this designation at this point. Well, Rosenberg is the center of Fort Bend County. If you look at a map, it is in the center of Fort Bend County. Access to I-69 and to the many ports in the area and also the multiple rail line system that we have will give it the ability to become once again the hub of the Gulf Coast from an economic standpoint. Fort Bend County is just uh, very unique in that the mayors all do work together. We meet once a month uh, for lunch and we share ideas and uh, that's what uh, makes, uh, makes Fort Bend County as strong as it is.